I'm Justin Davis, and this is Drone Camps RC. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to the Drone Camps channel. Today I have a really special video for the new guys out there and I always like to make these videos for you guys to get you headed in the right direction. Um, today we're gonna talk about VTXs and there's so many different types of VTXs out there uh, that it can make your head spin and each VTX is different that you might see out on the web in a web store. You might get confused about which one to order, but I'm gonna clear up a lot of that today. We're gonna to talk about a few different types of VTXs here today. We're going to talk about some nano VTXs. We're gonna show you some old school style VTXs, two different types of those. We're gonna talk about 30 by 30 mounting stacks. We're gonna talk about the more smaller nano style uh, 20 by 20 stacks, and we'll talk about some side mount VTXs. And if you don't know what VTX means, it just means video transmitter. Uh, video transmitter meaning transmitting the video back to your goggles so that you can make the transmission uh, complete and see a video on the screen. So uh, these little guys do get super hot on the bench and some of them do have built-in temperature sensors and they will actually turn off and save it from melting on the bench. Now if you're out flying in close to 100 degree weather, if you leave your quad plugged in for say uh, more than five minutes just sitting there without flying, it needs that extra cooling while you're flying to keep this from overheating. A lot of them don't have any type of temperature sensor on it. So uh, one thing to think about when you're purchasing one of these, and um, trust me, I've had tons of these burn up right on the bench and you don't even really know it until the video starts to go out. Now, one way to tell if your VTX is overheating if you're sitting there looking at your goggles and you notice that your OSD starts to flicker and sort of turn half white, half black on you and starts to fade out of the screen, that means that your VTX is uh, getting overheated and you need to quickly unplug your battery and turn your quad off. So I'm gonna help you identify a few different types of VTXs here today. We're also going to help you identify and choose which VTX for which quad because each VTX that you see here is usually for something different. And uh, we're gonna start out with the first one in the group. And this is gonna be a side mount style VTX. And this usually is mounted on the side uh, with the MMCX connector facing out the back. And you probably do it something like this and you have your button back here to change channels. And this is the Maytech Systems uh, VTX HV. And I just got this one in just this week and it has a really nice voltage range on it from seven to 27 volt. One other thing to think about when you're selecting one of these is look at the voltage range on it. Um, because depending on the flight controller that you power this from, uh, or if you power it straight from your battery source, which some people sometimes do if there's a built-in LC filter, which helps clean up any uh, static noise coming from your um, power system. But most people are going to power these off of the flight controller. It's just gonna be a better way to do it. Uh, but you have two types of connectors on these. You have the MMCX connector, which is that larger style connector. And this is sort of popular this year and really nice because it snaps into place just like this and you'll actually hear it snap in. And these guys don't come off very easy. They just don't come off uh, unless you take it off later. And you actually have to hold on to the VTX quite tight to pull it back off. So uh, be careful when you're removing these MMCX. You don't want to uh, break that solder joint right there where the connector is. But these are usually my choice when I'm going to select a VTX. And the next connector on a lot of VTXs that are a little bit smaller, and sometimes I've seen these on five inch quads, they're kind of annoying, they are the UFL connector. This guy is super tiny, check him out up close. Uh, the problem with these is two things. They tend to pop off, I'll just try to bring it a little closer to see if I can get this camera to focus on macro there. There we go. So these little points on the outside edges do get bent and sometimes they wear out and eventually I've had some that just um, get pushed the wrong way or get pushed too hard and they won't connect back on the VTX. So I'm not a huge fan of these, but these are pretty popular on micro brushless quads. And uh, this is an example of one right here. This little VTX has the connector here. It's just built and soldered right onto this PCB. And all you do is just snap it down just like this. And they're usually a little bit finicky to get snapped down, but once it's snapped down, it looks a little bit like this. The problem with this one is the moment that you go to mount this on your quad or move it a, a tiny little bit, 
it just pops right off. So um, this will happen sometimes when you have a hard crash. And normally what I do with these is I take a little bit of hot glue and I position it to where I want it. Once my build is done, dab a hot glue over the connector and the antenna part right there. And then what I do is the next point down the line, I usually take a small zip tie and zip tie it off to the frame so that from this top point on, this is usually where I have a zip tie up here holding this dipole part up this way off the top of the quad. And the zip tie in this, the center of it helps to keep this part from moving. So uh, that's usually gonna keep this pretty stationary and not have it move around too much. That way you have your zip tie and your bit of hot glue there to keep this all in place. So uh, kind of more of a pain in the butt to use those in my opinion versus the new newer MMCX style connector. Um, just a much better choice if you're gonna buy a VTX for your quadcopter. Now I happen to like this Maytech Systems VTX HV uh, switchable VTX a lot because they did give me two different types of connectors here. They gave me one that is for connecting a larger style antenna. If you have a Pagoda antenna, you can screw this right into your Pagoda off the back of the quad, or you can actually use uh, the AX2, or you can use one of the Fox here lollipops. Uh, any type of SMA connector will actually go onto that, and that's a male right there. You see that male part goes into the female end right there. And you're just gonna screw this part down to your quad, but it's cool that they give you two choices there. So you get actually a dipole, this is the dipole for that with the MMCX connector there. So some people like to run these. Um, in my opinion, I, I feel like these are a better choice for if you're going to want to fly longer range. If you want to get further out there, this is the better choice with something like a uh, Pagoda or an AX2. It's just going to get you much further range than your typical dipole. So uh, dipole setups are getting better but they're still not quite as good as a right-hand circular polarized antenna can be, uh, or even a clover leaf antenna will get you out usually a little further than a dipole will. So let's look at this Maytech Systems VTX HV a little closer. This is pretty cool because I was telling you about the power voltage range. We have seven to 27 volts right there. So you can pretty much power that straight from your quad battery source, uh, right from your connector if you want to, or you can go straight to the flight controller, which is totally fine. Uh, and that's gonna be your voltage in right there. Over here on this rail, you have some five volt out. You have two five volts all the way over at the left hand. And those are square pins right there. You could go straight through with your wire with a dab of solder. You have two grounds there. You have TX up at the top and video down at the bottom. You have RX and audio. So this little guy is rocking some IRC Tramp Smart Audio. So you can set that up inside Betaflight and actually control this one uh, from the sticks and your goggles. So you can go in and change your bands and your channels. So uh, they have a pretty sweet setup so far on this one. It has everything I want on this one. Um, and uh, this one's definitely gonna go on one of my 30 by 30 setups. You could also not choose to mount this directly above your flight controller. You could take this and put some heat shrink around it and put it somewhere else on the frame if you just wanted to run some power up to it. That wouldn't be a problem either. And also guys, this VTX is actually switchable. There is a power switch button on here. And if you look really closely here, you can see 25, 200, and 500 right there. You can go all the way up to 500 milliwatt and uh, you can break it all the way down to 25 for some proximity flying. So 500 is gonna get you way out there. 200 is kind of a, kind of an average standard transmission rate um, and uh, 500 is gonna be when you're usually flying by yourself or out in a big open field. But the reason I got this one is because this is one of my best choices right now for um, my current builds. And I just wanted you guys to see that. I'll try to put a link down below for this one because this one is a really high quality VTX. Now also very popular are these types of VTXs. These are a 30.5 by 30.5 mounting point. And a lot of times guys are just mounting these right above the flight controller. And the only issue that I have with these is it just makes the stack just a little bit taller. I usually like to take my VTX and kind of hide it out somewhere else. If you do that, you can actually make the uh, entire quad itself more of a low rider. You don't have to use this tall of standoffs and just has a lower profile look to it but this is a pretty nice vtx here this is from our charlance and uh called the vx30 it's 5.8 and has 40 channels it's switchable all the way up from 25 to 800 milliwatts so uh, quite a huge range on this one so uh, i mean i've actually 
been out on 800 milliwatt you can do like a couple miles if you have a good antenna set up on your goggles um, and you're, you're transmitting pretty powerful on 800 milliwatts so uh, long range or short proximity flying for racing or uh, proximity freestyle you've got an led button right here and you have a button right here for holding it down uh, two seconds to three seconds will switch the band short press will change the channel and long pressing it more than six seconds will actually change your power ratio uh, and you'll see the led switch on this little interface right here you'll see a bar across the top middle and the bottom there but what i do like about this one also is this one's following the trend that has the mmcx connector so this one came with one as well and this one just plugs in just like this and you can run this one out the back of the quad or mount it to the quad itself uh, sometimes people are kind of just mounting these going out the back of the quad and then you bend up the antenna like this and one of the other reasons i like this one is because it does come with that mmcx style connector it's following that trend right now and this just snaps into place and you'll notice that it does have a right turn right here this is supposed to be a nice cleaner signal than uh, straight out for some reason that's what a lot of people are saying but we're going to go ahead and you can bend this one around and do anything you like to it to mount it you can bring it up do a vertical mount which i don't really suggest because a lot of times it breaks the antenna off if you have a crash um, so i don't really like to vertical mount anything if you can print a tpu mount and have that between the two posts on the standoff in the back of your quad that's what a lot of people do because tpu will bend and this won't take such a, a, a direct hit when you do crash so that's going to be the better setup for this type of uh, vtx and it's always good to show you a little bit of history here on the channel this is the lumineer uh, original tx 5g 2r this had one of the original vtx's with race band on it that came out a couple years ago now i believe and this one was 200 milliwatt and uh, here's another example of the same size style vtx and a lot of us were just mounting these off the back of the quad and like i said before having the antenna come up and bend around takes a lot of the shock off of this connection right here but look you can see they have three here and two on this side these two posts and this is a horizontal style mount right here on this one so if you, you were laying this flat on your quad it would be on a horizontal axis and this one is more of a vertical mount and uh, in my experiences these right here don't hold up they break off and a lot of times what I tried to do is I try to run an extension line from this and come out the back of the quad and uh, do some type of TPU mount with this keeping this underneath the quad and keeping the shock off of this because if this is sticking up with an antenna on it if you put an antenna right on there it's almost in I mean you're probably gonna break this off on like the second or third uh, flight that you have a tiniest little tumble this is coming off that because the only thing holding this whole thing on here is that little PCB right there so uh, this is generally not a very good setup for connecting antennas directly to um, not a big fan of these right here so if you're going to buy one of these old school sort of uh, VTXs with this style connector on it and one that looks like this get this one right here with that horizontal SMA connector on here that's just going to be much better set up for uh, your quad and you're not going to have this break off quite as easy and if you're just getting into FPV and you're doing your first builds and you're building a micro brushless, this is probably one of the VTXs you want to consider. This is the HDLRC GTX Nano. This little guy is so light. I mean, this is literally like five to six grams. This is a super, super tiny, lightweight little guy. Um, the only drawback of this one is it's only powerable uh, up to about 50 milliwatt, but it is switchable between 25 and 50 milliwatt. So um, not too bad. You have 40 channels on this one and you actually do have a five volt out on here as well. You can run five volt out to your camera. If you want to power some kind of little type of uh, mini micro cam on a super small little brushed micro, or you want to do a brushless setup, this is a pretty foolproof way to do that. Not adding a whole lot of weight to your quadcopter um, this thing is like the size of my fingernail there it's super tiny now you will need a nice fine tip pin to solder this up you can see video there ground 5 volt you can 5 volt out rx ground and 5 volt in at the very end right there and you have your button right here for changing your power frequencies your bands and your channels and you'll notice this one doesn't have any kind of LED display right here, but it does have three little LEDs on the side right here. So uh, for your frequency, that's going to be green. Your channel is going to be blue and the power is going to be red. So when you have power to this, when you're powering it up for the first time after you build it, you want to look for that red light to make sure you're powered up. But not a bad choice for a super lightweight nano style VTX. 
Oh, and by the way, I just looked back at the specs on this one, and this one's actually two grams. Um, super, super lightweight. That's not including the antenna. I said five grams earlier. Uh, if you add in that little dipole antenna, you're probably going to add another three to four grams onto the total weight of your VTX for your micro brushless, which is still pretty, pretty competitive to a lot of the other VTXs out there on micro brushless. So remember before I showed you the R Charlance uh, VX30 there that was that 30.5 by 30.5 mounting VTX right above your flight controller and this is what that one looked like with the MMCX connector on there. Now this one is the HGLRC, this is the DVR plus VTX, so um, this one actually has a little micro SD card slot on the bottom of it, so this one is two things in one. It is a VTX and a DVR, and a lot of guys want right now to be able to record straight to their VTX instead of recording to their Fat Shark goggles. Um, just a little bit better resolution recording to these than the Fat Shark resolution, just not very good. So HGLRC and a lot of other companies are actually starting to make these as well so uh, just when you thought there was like a whole lot of different types of vtx's out there here comes another style so um, and the dvr vtx is also switchable which all of us pretty much expect these days this one is 25 100 200 and 500 milliwatt and it does uh, vga video 640 by 480 it's on 58 and running a voltage range from 7 to 26 volts and i believe there's 40 channels to 48 channels on this one and six different bands so uh, this is their version 1.0 and they did also do that popular mmcx connector you do get a bunch of uh, different standoffs in the pack with this vtx and you also get that uh, mmcx connector there which has an antenna wire that runs out to your sma connector on the end right there and that's another one that you can kind of bend around and do what you like depending on how your frame setup is now up on the side right here you have a switch on the very top here for changing channels and bands and this is going to be your record button down here and also if you hold down on this button right here for more than six seconds you're going to see this led change to a number of bars and then you're going to be able to start switching through your power on this vtx from 25 100 200 and 500. 500 is not bad um, i'd like to see that these had a little little more power and maybe going up to about 800 and I'm pressing on a lot of these companies to get us up to 1200 there's actually another company out there called AKK who's making the AKK 1200 milliwatt 5.8 transmitter and that one gets super hot on the bench and uh, so hot that it started to melt the plastic around it so um, keep your eye on these on the bench they can really overheat and um, you can have one of these go out pretty quickly in just a few minutes on the bench but this one is a pretty nice offering from hglrc i believe speedy b also makes the a vtx dvr as well so and i'll try to put a link down below so you guys can check out the variety of different vtx's out there and i'll try to make sure that the description is right under each link so that you can get an idea of a 30 by 30 stack what's available the uh, smaller side two mount stacks these are going to be sort of half size of these and they mount right over top of the flight controller like that or you can uh, put heat shrink over them and put them somewhere else but make sure that this is kind of open and you don't cover this uh, up because this is your heat sink and you want the heat to be able to dissipate from this little guy because like i said they get roasting hot so hopefully this video helps you guys. You're a little more up to speed with what's out there currently. And uh, there's going to be some really interesting competition out there for making the most powerful VTX and starting to combine DVR into our VTXs. So uh, these companies are really fighting tooth and nail to, to make the best VTX for you. And uh, so far we have a lot of really good ones coming out. This Maytech Systems VTX HV is definitely one of my top choices right now. Uh, and the next one over here is the 800 milliwatt from Arshar Lance. And that's going to be more of a budget high end, super powerful 800 milliwatt VTX with uh, that 30 by 30 point mounting setup you also have that dvr style which is going to be super popular there from hglrc the two old school ones that i showed you here with that sort of vertical mount and the horizontal mount avoid this one do not buy these because a lot of times uh, unless you're building a specific quadcopter where you need this type of connector i would stay away from these uh, and, and i've had some of these overheat they don't have any type of temperature sensor on them so uh, they will just sit there and fry and the video will go black 
and you have the little nano VTXs that are coming out as well. And uh, HGRC is kind of leading the pack when it comes to that. But also, hopefully, you have a better idea of the variations of MMCX connectors with SMA connector style and the dipole style that are being included with a lot of these now. So I'm looking forward to more MMCX style connectors instead of these little uh, UFL connectors. These are kind of hopefully going to get less and less popular uh, for our brushless micros and for our five inch racers. But thanks again for watching this video and uh, hopefully it helps you out. Share it with a friend and uh, pass on your knowledge to the next guy in the hobby. So take care guys and happy flying. I'll see you on the next one.